So using all that stuff we learned in the last video, we will finally be able to count the numbers as the section implies. But first we have to have a brief introduction to three new concepts. The first is what is known as the mole. The second is a constant called Avogadro's number. And the third and final thing is going to be molar mass. And we can't get to molar mass until we've covered the first two. So first, the mole. Now the mole, which you can abbreviate by taking off the E, is the international standard unit for amount of substance. Just like how, you know, a dozen is an amount of substance. You can have a dozen dump trucks or you can have a dozen eggs, but you still have 12 of either. It's just a different mass and different things really. Similarly, a chemist can ask for, you know, one mole of iron or one mole of hydrogen and he's going to get two very different things with two very different masses. But he's still going to get the same amount of each. He's going to get exactly one mole's worth. Now Avogadro's number, which is of course just a constant, is the amount of stuff in a mole. So just as you have 12 eggs in a dozen, you have Avogadro's number, you know, number of molecules in a mole. And Avogadro's number was determined by measuring the number of carbon-12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. And the best estimate we have right now is that it is 6.022.1415 times 10 to the negative 23rd, or sorry, to the 23rd atoms or molecules per mole, which is an astronomically large number. And for most purposes in this class, we're going to simply abbreviate Avogadro's number to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, things per mole. So because we know one mole is the number of atoms oh, atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12, we can use that as a basis to determine the mass of other molar substances for other elements. So, for example, we know that the atomic mass of helium is approximately four atomic mass units. Now, because we know that carbon-12 has 12 atomic mass units, and that an atom of helium weighs about a third of that, we can conclude that one mole of helium will have a mass about a third of that of carbon-12. That is, one mole of helium, instead of weighing 12 grams, will weigh 4 grams. And you'll notice that the atomic mass of helium is numerically equal to the molar mass, that is, the grams per mole of helium. And that corresponds equally to this number listed below the atomic symbol on the periodic table. This 4 both refers to the atomic mass in atomic mass units and the molar mass, that is, 4 grams for every mole of helium. Now you can use this molar mass as a conversion factor. If you have to get from number of atoms, which you can't directly measure, to a mass, which you can directly measure. So for example, let's say you need two moles of helium for some sort of chemical reaction. What you can do, because you can't count out exactly two moles of helium, you can use the molar mass, that is, for each one mole of helium, it weighs four grams, you can use this molar mass as a converting factor to figure out what you need to measure. So you cancel out the units, the, in this case the moles cancel with the moles, and you get that if you measure out eight grams of helium, you will have exactly 
two moles uh, of molecules. Oppositely, if you're given a mass, let's say in grams, of some sort of sample and you want to determine the number of atoms or molecules that you have in your hand right then, you can use the molar mass and Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So let's say you have 8 grams of helium and you want to know how many atoms of helium you have well you use the molar mass which is for each one mole of helium it weighs four grams and then you do one final step to convert this mole to number of atoms so for each mole there is exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms and then what you'll notice is the grams will cancel out because of one being in the numerator and one being in the denominator the moles will cancel out and all you're left with is atoms so you know you set up the problem correctly and you end up with 12.044 oh sorry let's do that in scientific notation uh, 1.2044 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium. Or if for some reason you're given the number of atoms and you can't wrap your head around that, you may want to use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor to get that in moles, which is a somewhat more tangible unit. So let's say you were given 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver you could then use Avogadro's number which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms for each mole and after doing some quick math let's see the 6.022 is exactly twice the 3.01 and the 10 times 10 to the 23rd Will both cancel out on the top and bottom, you get that you have one half a mole of silver or 0.5 moles if you prefer decimals.